All right. Well, we are waiting for our, uh, uh, they are rebooting their computer and have asked someone to make small talk. So I will talk small and make bad jokes while we wait. Uh, let's see here. What does that do? Uh, oh. Uh, cancel. That's screen sharing. We'll deal with that later. So, uh, rebooting is occurring. If you have questions uh, or want to uh, talk about something, feel free to throw it in the chat, and uh, we will ramble on about that while we wait for uh, the reboot to occur and for them to connect. Nice to see uh, Danielle back. Uh, yes, you will be able to, uh, if you've missed the first session. The very first session was an overview of how to use Tinkercad to simulate a project. The second session was an overview of how to use a breadboard and a physical Arduino to build the project. And this one is uh, or, or a project prototype using breadboard. And this one we're going to be looking at uh, uh, actually uh, physically soldering something together. Uh, alternative values for the button resistor 10K. Um, could work. So if you've got something that's, you know, 8K or 12K or whatever, that, that should be fine. Yeah, anything over 1K will probably work. Uh, I honestly have not messed around too much with the Arduino to see how far it can be pushed. Uh, yeah, my beard is, is pretty long now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 15 more. Getting, yeah, getting your resistors warm is a... Uh, is not recommended. Does my beard get stuck in the soldering iron? Actually, one of the lovely things about <clears throat> a long beard, uh, I'll aim this down so you can see, uh, is that the table catches it. Uh, sear. I'll turn on a light here so you can see. There we go. So you can see the, the, the table catches the beard and keeps it out of the way. If I need to uh, get rid of it for a moment, I just uh, tuck it into my shirt like this. And uh, voila, it is gone. I also have a uh, apron I can put on, or I'll put a second shirt on. <clears throat> All right, we have some people attempting to join, and I don't know why. Is the cat with, that's a good question. Where are you at, Raven? Usually, when I start a live stream or a phone call, she's right up in here, but she, I think, is laying down upstairs in the bedroom, uh, chilling. So she's not with me currently, she's upstairs. I need to clean this room up. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm not sure what you mean by half boards, four columns. All right. 
and Joe. Or no. Uh, the question is, like is this session recorded? Yes, it's going to be recorded. Hey, Joe. Sorry, it doesn't seem to like my overhead camera, but uh, if you only have one of these single, spot, single part boards, you can still do it. But what you might have to do is have a bunch of wires that jump or all your LEDs over. Does that make sense? Because I think in the example, it was like a double edged breadboard, kind of like that. Uh, I see. That's all. Well, thank you so much for the demonstration. Yeah, so yeah, off. there we go. Rebooting, recompiling the kernel. How bad is it? He'll be here soon, I believe. Oh. They're having one of those, your computer ran into a problem and needs to be restarted again uh, issues. Good. Uh, all right, coordinating with uh, all right. So, uh, let's talk about the theory uh, behind soldering. What, what what we're working on um, while we wait for the technical issues to be uh, dealt with, and then uh, Chris can begin the, uh, the demo. Uh, so let's let's start with the first thing. Uh, soldering is not like other forms of sticking things together. It's not like tape or glue where a lot of pressure is your friend. If you use a lot of pressure, you're going to have a bad time. In addition to possibly damaging your soldering iron, you're going to um, cause the PCB to move, you're going to bend parts, you're, you're going to, um, you're probably going to damage things. When you're using your soldering iron, you want to use very light pressure. Uh, this is not on currently. Uh, let me switch, Let's see, can I switch cameras? Um, So when we are putting the iron down, we're going to want to just gently lay it here. We don't want to push down. We don't want to uh, uh, be aggressive. We just want to lay it in place. We're using our hands. Let me switch cameras again. This is, I'm not using OBS, so switching between cameras is uh, problematic. We want to lay the iron gently down and just use the tip to apply heat. Soldering is all about heat and heat uh, management, where we're putting the heat and what work we're doing with heat. Uh, so when we're doing our soldering, we want to think very carefully about where the heat is and where it isn't and where we want it to be. When we're trying to create an electromechanical connection using solder, we need to uh, solder is going to flow and it's going to flow to the hottest thing that it can uh, that is going to be its strong preference the hottest thing it can flow to is going to be the iron so we're going to want to make it work to get there when we apply the heat we're going to apply the heat on one side of the pad and we're going to put the solder on the other side so that it has to work going around the part to get over to the heat uh, 
and that is going to make it significantly smoother. If we just put the solder directly on the heat, it has very little uh, motivation to leave that heat and go to something that's relatively much colder like the PCB or anything that's not being actively heated by a heating element like the soldering iron is. So that is one of the things you're going to want to keep in mind as you uh, work on this project and follow along with the demo. You're going to be paying attention to where the heat is and making the solder do the work for you. Uh, try to solder by putting a big ball of solder on the then uh, applying that directly to the board and that can work but it's going to be more frustrating and require a lot more flux. Instead what we're going to want to do is apply a small amount of solder uh, when we tin the iron on the other on one side of the board make the solder work to get to that heat and you'll see that it, how it flows. After we get that flow, we're going to want to remove the solder, but we're going to want to leave the heat there for a second, and that will allow uh, the solder to uh, the heat to homogenize the solder all the way through, and it could be a really good connection. So I will bugger off and let them take over now. Hi guys, just want to make sure everybody can hear me to start with because I had a blue screen of death because Murphy's Law. Excellent. All right, so this is the third and final version that I'm not going to say ever because, you know, we might revisit this project if we get to meet in person because I could see this going really nicely on a fancy artsy RT PCB. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is what this we're making this session. Um, it's the same as the other two if you were in it, either one of the earlier sessions. Um, we're basically going to build our own little little Arduino experimental platform. Seven LEDs, four colors, a button for input, and an Arduino Nano. Yay. So is everybody ready to get started? You got your irons all hot and all ready to go. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so here we have our electro cookie. Um, if you found one of these on Amazon, great. If you didn't, I'm hoping that you found something appropriately similar. And so we're just going to dive right in because um, that's the one thing about being the um, hardware person. It's kind of like when the shoemaker's kids go barefoot, you um, spend all day fixing other people's problems for libraries and whatnot. And so you just want to go home and use your own system and just kind of ignore those general maintenance tasks that I probably should not be putting off any longer. <laughs> all right, so we're going to start with the uh, with the uh, with the, oh my God, what is this? This is a resistor. Hi, yeah. Um, apparently I do need a, an adult beverage at this point. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna bend our LEDs um, and then we're gonna put them on the board and I just lost my notes, oh my God. Ah, oh, there we go. Prototype, yay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with our 220 ohm resistors. Um, these are current limiting resistors for the LEDs. Um, basically the Arduino puts out more power than the LEDs can handle on their own. So we use an, a resistor to limit the current. And if you've got the notes, all of these go from the, Wow. Oh, let's try it that way. Oh, that looks much better. <sighs> okay. 
So all of these go um, from row J into the negative rail. And so this one goes into number four. Like that. And then if I get if I can get oriented here. And there's a nice close up shot for number four. And back to the wide angle. And then on the other side, holding the resistor down, just bend these out just enough so that it stays put. And then we're going to put the next one in at J8 and the negative rail. And yes, I'm using my fancy little component bendy tool. Because if you've got it, why not? And again, with the flip. Um, so that's what you, so if you really, really have to have one of these, um, I guess search for it on Amazon. Um, I hear tell that, um, oh, the place, um, God. <sighs> the place with the STLs. Um, wow. <laughs> Yes, Thingiverse. Thank you, Ben. And apparently SparkFun has them too. Okay, now that we have that solved and I might be able to talk again by the end of the session. So we're at 12, J16. Bending those out. Mm -hmm. I don't. All right. <sighs> and then we need to go with J20, negative, and row J. This is number 20, J24. If somebody yells bingo, I'm just going to be, that would just be amazing at this point. And there's that one. And uh oh, get out one more. And bend that in place. All right. And this one goes into 28. All right. So now that we have our resistors placed, stop. Okay, there's the dot. We're going to flip the board over and solder them on the back side. And so before I start soldering, I'm going to try to just adjust here here and get a good angle for the other camera for you. There we go. We're going to do a couple with that. Yeah, so now we're on close up. And so you can see what I got going here. And as we've talked about, handy, handy, handy flux. Um, I like a liquid for through-hole projects. Um, I'll put it on camera for the other, on the other, uh, when I have the other camera back up. Um, you can actually get, it looks almost like a magic marker. And that's better for um, surface mount. 
And then sometimes um, you'll see a paste and that's best for wires. And I do have all three laying around my workshop, of course. So like Ben was explaining, you wanna heat this up and touch a little solder to it, maybe. And maybe my iron's still dirty. Oh, come on. Come on, there we go. Starting to get there. All right, Wait a second, let me tin this. So one of the things to keep in mind, and I'll bring the tip back in the frame here. Um, if your tip of your soldering iron isn't like super shiny, it's not going to conduct heat as well. And I'm kind of hoping Ben went over this a little bit. So you just throw a little solder on there and then clean it back off. Um, I like a ball of brass. Some people prefer water. So let's do the one side of the ones that are visible. First, and then we'll spin this around. Um, now, this is one of those things that this technique works for me and it may not work as well for you. Um, I find it easier to always have the soldering iron in my right hand, always have the solder in my left, and then moving the work itself as needed to get those joints so that I'm in a good position to solder those joints. And let's see, this one's in frame, so we'll do this one too. And then we'll just keep going on down, find some more that are ready to be soldered and in the frame. And there's one, and there's one. And there's one. And there's one. And now we're gonna spin this around. And we got a few more here in frame. So we'll do those. And Ben put a good point here in the chat that water and sponge will pull heat out of the tip and can accelerate the uh, and accelerate how fast your tip deteriorates um, or where where is out breaks down. Um, I use little balls of uh, they look like Brillo pads, but they're made of brass. And when we go back to the wide view, I'll show you that as well. I actually. Um, printed my own holder for them, but you can get, but they do come, but you can get them as well. And where is that? That's right there. Okay. So there's the resistors. Put the iron back in the holder because it's really, really hot. And we'll wipe back to the wide screen. And so I'll give you all time to, to work on that while I show you a couple of things here. So this is how I clean my tip. Um, they're a little smaller. Um, I found this little smaller holder on Thingiverse now that I no longer brain farting about where, it, where I get my STLs. Um, and so the iron actually just kind of goes in here and you stab it a few times and it's kind of, pleasantly satisfying to be able to stab something and then this tip's all shiny. And then you end up with little bits of solder. And a note on solder, um, I'm not sure if Ben talked about this while I was dealing with the blue screen of death, um, but um, if it seems like mine's going super easy, um, that's because I go old school. This is leaded solder. It's actually 63% tin and 37% lead. Lead with a uh, with extra with a little bit of extra solder in the core. So, has everybody got their resistors done and ready to cut? Oh, 
Okay, that's fine. I figured that of all the sessions that this one was going to go as long or if not over. So that's fine. We can wait. No worries. Oh, give me a second to, to get my cheaters on. Because I will be the first to admit that I do not have the best eyesight and actually wear little magnifying glasses. Um, lately, I've taken to using a little microscope that's got a seven inch screen. I do most of my soldering under that these days, but these cheaters will be fine for the stream. Okay, done. And Jay can't find their solder. Okay. Yeah, Jay, as long as you get a good um, solid bend on all the leads, you should be able to go through and solder this anytime. So so can I get an R or a ready in the chat, please? And we'll move on. Excellent. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, now that we've got our resistors on, we're going to just trim off the little legs. And when you do this, um, set these down. Um, hold the hold what you're clipping off in one hand and um, cut with the other um, mostly because if you don't I can guarantee you that this will end up in your foot and usually at 3 a.m. when you're least equipped to deal with it not that I would have had any experience of this whatsoever <laughs> Okay, so there's our resistors. Now we're gonna do the long part next, um, just because the way um, the prototype ended up, because I just had to at least once in one project use 10 millimeter LEDs um, just for the just for the WTF factor. Um, so we're actually gonna skip ahead and do the wires first, and then we're gonna come back and do the LEDs. So go ahead and get out some wires. I'm going to grab some, hopefully, maybe, uh, hail. As we rustle stuff from the back here. Oh, here's some too. Okay. So I'm just going to cut up some um, some other jumpers to make sure that we have colors. Um, so like these came in from China, broken, like whatever. And these are just, and there's, you can see that one's broken. But, you know, the wire in between them is still good and it, it helps us get everything color coded. So that'll be useful. So we're going to start with the red and tool, 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 tool. There we go. And this is your pretty standard wire clippers. Um, the way I like to do this is I usually like to take the heads off first, like so. And then we're going to strip these back, one on each side. And now here's the tricky part. You want to take and hold the bare wires tight and then twist the wire. And let me get the other camera out here. So we can get this in front of the other camera. Okay, right there. 
and we'll get the other camera going here. And you can see how that's kind of like now in a tight little spiral versus the other end, which is a little bit all over the place. And this one's going to be a lot easier to solder. And back out. So here's wire. So here's the other end, all twisted. Um, and we're going to go total pro on this. This, as soon as I. <sighs> figure out where I set the flux down at. Oh, there we go. All right. So I'm just going to add a little drop there. Um, so, like I said, I do use leaded solder. Um, realistically, if you look at the material data safety sheets for lead, um, it's not super dangerous until you start ingesting it. Um, so as long as you wash your hands, you can use leaded solder, it's fine. Um, so this is my technique for tinning wires. Um, there are like, you know, it's one of those things that everybody has a favorite. Um, I like putting a ball of solder on the tip of my iron and just running it through. And now we have our perfectly tinned wire. Yay. Well, almost. And that does happen sometimes. I don't know. Let's see if we can put that in front of the big screen. The close up. Yeah, I got a little blob there. Um, usually I just cut those off. You could work it some more or cut it off. Uh, that's kind of a dealer's choice situation. So it's way at the end, so we'll just kind of boop, gone. Okay, so now that we have our perfectly ready to put on the breadboard soldered wire, we're going to bend the shiny parts at 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And then this is going to go in J27 and let's get this one right this time and it's and it's I Yeah, it should be. I-11, is that what I have written down? Somebody check the sheet for me. Thank you, Jay, it is I-11. So then we're gonna go over here to I-11. Cause there's nothing like a blue screen of death to completely and totally throw you off your game. And so we're gonna bend that in. And unlike the resistors, which made more sense to do in a bunch, um, we're going to do these individually. So let me get that under the close-up camera. Move things aside here. There we go. And so we wipe over. And clean the iron. And there's one side. And there's the other. And then just like before, we're going to trim away a 
any excess. So there's our so there's our first wire. And thank you, Peter, for that perfect textbook answer. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our first yellow. And we got the tool. And we take the heads. And kind of start seeping things off out of camera. Cause... Oh, God. There's one. And there's two and spin and spin and I keep trying to do this closer to me to me because that's what I'm used to and so if I'm ever way way out of frame just start yelling screaming hollering and we'll take care of it and one thing that is going to get out of frame is I basically just put down a little puddle of flux so that I can just dip these guys. Because these mats have little pockets. And in fact, I have a piece of old mat here that we'll fill instead so that we can kind of have it, so that you can kind of see it. So there's my little puddle. Little puddle of secret sauce. And a little summer, a little tinning, and a little tin there, and then we'll clean off the excess solder. stand up so it's easier to grab. Okay. So once again, we've got it tinned. And the big thing is, is that this board is designed as practice. Um, so while I'll make every effort imaginable to make sure that everybody is on the same page, um, keep in mind that, you know, if you only get two done or four done or five done, um, that's fine. During the session, that's fine. It's not, not a big deal. Like I said, a lot of this board is practice. So we're bent over, bent over. There we go. And now we'll drop into... Oh, there it is. Okay. And there's our joint. And we got that one. Uh, let's drop a little flux on the other one. It seemed a little stiff. All right. All right, and there's the next one. All 
and a cut. Nope. Sorry, buffer. And a cut there. And a cut there. There's that one. And now, let's see, we got another yellow. Yep, there's another yellow. And we'll do, I'll do one more, I'll do this one. And then we'll wait and let people catch up because I know that I'm doing this at what feels like a slow pace to kind of help you keep up. But the reality is, is that it probably is a little fast. So we'll do this, this one here. And this one will be into 19. Here. Okay. And then here, and I did not tend these because it's late and I've just, yeah. Oh, okay, so there, 10, and a little more 10, you know, on the side, maybe. There we go. Look at that. Wow, uh -huh. look at that. All right, so that's kind of interesting and fun. Um, you can see that these were done by two different manufacturers. <laughs> so while they both individually looked yellow, they do not look, they're not the same color on the board. That's kind of awesome. All right, or I'm too easily amused because I'm too easily amused. All right, so let's get our little puddle out of the way this over where we can see it in the close-up. Click the button. And we'll do number three. There's the one side. And there's the other. All right. And we'll wipe back to the wide view. And don't mind me. Studio lighting, sometimes things look soldered that aren't. All right, so we've got our first three and then we'll go ahead and give everybody a good minute or two here to make sure that everybody's caught up.
you can tell it's not soldered because it doesn't work. Yeah, that that's usually a good good indicator too. All right. Yes, I'll be patient. Um, so yeah, and the thing with soldering is, is that it's one of those things that it can be either nerve wracking or totally relaxing. Um, once you get it down, um, honestly, I usually solder while watching TV or or a baseball game or whatever. Um, especially when you realize that your makerspace just got closed because of a pandemic and all of a sudden you're going to have to hand assemble all your things. Okay. So. <laughs> yes, I've had that happen. Um, in case you missed it, um, Meadows done it where she, where she put the continuity meter on it and it's and it pings and it says yes I'm connected and then when you actually power up the circuit it doesn't work okay so for the green ones we're going to talk about what happens if you don't have the right length jumper or if you're going off of a spooler wire um, I'm going to show you the technique that I like to use for that um, you can you know obviously if this doesn't work for you we can do something different so i'm going to pretend that this is on a spool and just cut the one end for now and then we're going to strip the one end and so if it's on a spool or too long or or you've taken the guesswork and yep it's that little off camera puddle little flux and we'll drop it a little there, a little there. Put that back for a second. Got that bent like we normally would. And we're going to go here and just bend it down. And then, so what you do in that case is you kind of want to just flow it around and you can use a marker um, I just use my fingers and so now you kind of know that we only need that much and then we can strip it down spin flux solder And bend. And then there we are there. And probably still a little longer than it needs to be. So let's go ahead. Take off a little more, maybe if we're lucky. Ha, huh, I got it. There. And then we'll 
course, we got a little part now that's not tinned. So there's that. And doink. Do this again. And we got that bent into place. Yay. And then we'll get this up by the dot. That by the way, a little bit by the dot. Or to left, to left, to left, to left. There we go. And what the heck. Random transitions are more fun. And a little flux. And I think there's probably enough solder on that tip. Yep. And then we'll go over here. And we're good there. And so there's green one. And now we're going to do the same thing for green two. And oh, wrong camera. Back over here. Um, we're going to go digital two through whatever. Um, so it'll be digital two for the red and digital nine for the last blue. No, we're supposed to keep the, the magic smoke in the, com in the components, people. It is to, to keep the magic smoke in the components so that they function properly. And clean this off because we haven't in a bit. Shiny. Okay. And then we'll tin this. And tin that. Is it still? Still magic if you don't see it. 
Yes, unfortunately, even if you do not see the magic smoke come out, if magic smoke has come out, your, your device may not function as intended. But it's still, yes, magic blue smoke. <laughs> All right, so there's the other green. Get that in there nice and tight. So oh, there it is. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yes, we've reached the goofy part of the session where you're going to see random weird transitions and and all kinds of good things. So there's one side of the green wire. And here comes the other. Yay. Oh, sorry about that. I actually brought it up a little closer to me to, uh, cut because that's what I'm used to. I'm not used to doing this on camera. I'm used to doing this by myself in my basement with my dog sleeping on my foot and and the twins or the Vikings streaming live next to me. All right, so we're on to blue. So yay, blue wire. And off Kramer Flux Puddle. Little tin. Little tin. Little cleaning. And flip, flip those down and find this pot. Zoom in. And we're ready for the next. All right, there's that. And there's that. And a little excess to trim off. And I'll do the other side off camera. And we'll fade back out. And there's the blue. And here's another little blue. And 
and the twist and the twist and the off camera puddle o flux All right, and then we got that. And that. That goes in there. This spins around and goes in here. Or not. That's going back, and that goes back there. Yay. All right, and then. And there we go there. And there we go there. And, uh, oops, I did the other side off screen. I'm sorry. Let's go back to. <laughs> and Mark is correct about that. Um, to be fair, um, it's off camera, so I'll bring it on camera. Um, I found this 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, it's actually USB rechargeable, so I can put it wherever I need to, to and it does blow across. Um, I, haven't, I haven't had it on just because I was worried about the smoke blowing on too much for the cameras. So yes, do not solder like in the back closet with no ventilation. You probably get away with it the first few times, but it's not a, a long, good long-term idea. All right. So I've got all my leads that go to my LEDs ready ready and i'm gonna go ahead give you guys a couple of minutes um minutes to uh to finish the wires
Does polarity matter on the placement of the LCDs? Yes, 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 indeed. And we'll get to that here in a second. Just wanted to make sure that everybody was done with their wires. So if we could get that good old ready check going. While I pull out some LEDs here, there's a red one and a yellow one and another yellow one. No, you stay, stay. Green, green, blue, blue. Okay. All right, we're going to move on here. And so these are big 10 millimeter LEDs. Um, let me see if I have, if I do not have something smaller handy. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. So these are our 10 millimeter LEDs. Um, Long legs positive, short legs negative. Our negative is gonna line up with our resistor. The positive is gonna line up with the wire. Um, this is a more traditional three millimeter LED. Um, unlike these big ones that don't really have it, um, I just wanted to point out that on, the, uh, on a regular normal sized LED, that there was actually a flat side that lines up with the negative leg. Um, so you can kind of see it there, there, but that's, yeah, that's a, this is more of a normal size LED. This is what we're using just to give you some perspective. Um, I could pull out a 603, which would really drive home how much smaller they've gotten through the years. Um, so let's start with the, the red one. And so that's going to go in H. 27, 28 for the short leg. And then these are not going to go all the way through. They are going to ride on these wires a little bit. So don't be alarmed. And once again, this is going to be a good case of place them all and then solder. Yeah, we we'll have to go that way. Wow, I mucked this up. <laughs> And so they may, oh, blue, wrong color. Okay. And wow. I need a frosty malted beverage. And I, I don't, and I'm not talking about something that comes from the Dairy Queen. All right. So positive, negative, positive, negative. We're just gonna let them ride on the wires if we can, if we have to. Push things aside if you need to. Let's go this way. I actually screwed up when I did the wires. I'm sorry, they should have been down around F. My bad. So there we go. And if you're very gentle, you can flip those over. And then we're just going to take the legs and bend them out a bit. And why are we not sitting straight? Okay, let me look here. Okay, so mine aren't straight. Um, that's probably because I got them from two separate sources. Um, the ones I ordered 
Um, some of these I ordered off of Amazon and they're actually flat on two sides. And then some of these um, I stole from my makerspace and they're only flat on one side. So that thing, you know, things happen. So I'm gonna drop some of these down and some of these up. Um, if yours have two flat sides, um, it doesn't have any flat sides. So if yours have the two flat sides, they'll fit really good, nice and tight together. Um, if you have the ones that are round, you're going to want to alternate them a little bit. So one up, one down as needed. So let's try that one. Oh. Yay. And once again, I'd like to point out that the demo gods do hate me. <laughs> that I am not their friend or their colleague or whatever, but we'll get these guys in. <laughs> Yeah, the problem isn't so much, the thing is, it is these LEDs themselves. Um, here, if we can get zoomed in here. Is that I have some that are like flat. They're kind of an oval shape. If we can see it here on the, we can see it here on the bottom where this is flat and this is flat. And then, because these were really expensive, I just went over to my makerspace and got some from there. And let's see if we find one from them. And so the ones I got from them are perfectly round. <laughs> so you plan a project and then and then your stuff doesn't come in, so you have to go get borrow stuff from someplace else. And of course, it isn't exactly the same stuff. And so that was just something I did not notice. So some of these are going to be, so they're not going to be perfectly straight like they are on the demo board. And at this point, I am entirely okay with that, just as long as they're reasonably flat. I think I have to move. So it's really just the blues, so seem to be the problem. So we should be good there. We're better there anyway. And now we're gonna flip this over and get it under the cam under the other camera. Kind of feel around a little bit. There we go. Okay. Oh, we're already under the other camera. Okay. Yes, I really miss having actual physical helpers. Because then I can just record a video and leave it on a loop. And then have people do this at their own pace. with some written instructions and the YouTube video. Much better way to do a soldering village, but this works too. But it is what it is. All right. So what do we got here? 28, okay. And so we're gonna go in and solder in some of these LEDs, maybe. Or not. So there's one. There's another one. And this one's still on screen. So let's nudge this up a little bit. And then we're going to go with this side and this side. 
And the thing about using these soldered breadboards is, is that there is supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to have this little perfect Hershey's kiss of solder on the backside. I have found that with these soldered breadboards, um, you're, they're taking so much solder into these oversized holes that as long as you get the hole full, you're probably in a good, pretty good place. So then we're gonna spin this around to do the other side. And we'll continue on. And there's that. And there's that. And there's that. And oops, we're off camera, sorry. There we go. <laughs> oh, come on, these are silicon. <laughs> There's that. It looks like we need a little more in this one. As long as we're back here. All right. So there we go. And we'll flip back out. Get everything trimmed down here. And there we are. And yeah, not quite as neat as the ones that were that all had their their sides trimmed, but it is what it is. All right, and we'll do a ready check. Let me know when you're done with your LEDs.
All right, is everybody ready to move on? Yes, okay. All right, I'm gonna assume that if the 10 year old's ready, then everybody else should be good. So we're, okay. And so now we have our little Arduino and we're gonna put that on next. And we want to make sure to get all of the pins in at once. Now, did anybody get an Arduino that did not have these pins already soldered? Nope, okay. All right, so we're gonna attach this on here. Um, and it's gonna go into H and D. And you want to make sure that your red wire lines up with D2 there. And let me get a good shot of it before we even start soldering it. Okay, and so just a note. Um, no, there you can see it. And let's see if we can spin it around. Because from the wrong angle, it looks like I'm in D3, but I guess there is a good angle where we can see that, yes, it's in D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, and D8. No, actually I cheated and did the headers before we started because I told everybody to buy them with, with pre-soldered headers. You can tell because I didn't put all the headers on. <laughs> all right, so we're lined up. Everybody's got a good clean shot of what this should look like way up close. And so we're going to flip this over. And... So in case you're wondering um, why I hold the board really weird is because it's actually easier to um, find, find where I need the camera angle to be if I'm right on top of it. It's kind of a muscle memory thing. Okay, so because this isn't flat, what you're going to want to do when it comes to getting these pins on is we're going to pick a pin and probably the pin that's absolutely the easiest to solder, which in my case is going to be at uh, G1 according to the grid on the board. And we're just going to do this one pin. Just the one pin. And what we want to do is we want to flip it over. And let me get back out into the wide angle so you can see this a little better. And so what we're going to do after we do our first pin is we just want to take a good look at it and make sure that it's flat and that it's level. Because if we only have the one pin, we can heat up that one pin and push it 
down further into the board if we need to. Um, if we do them all, that's kind of out, of, out the window. So mine appears to be flat and good. So we'll line that back up. With close up camera and pop back over to that. And we'll drizzle a little flux. And just go to town. I'll just move up a little bit. if I get that steady enough. So that's what side A should look like. And now we'll spin it around and do the B side. One and two. Next, and next, and next. And we'll bridge there, but as long as we're bridging along the same line, we're okay. And we're off camera again, yay. All right, and there's that. And did I trim this on? I did trim this, okay. Stay. All right, so there we go. And we'll get back over to the wide view here. So there it is, all soldered in place. Place. Nice. 
ready to go. And then of course, you can trim those legs. And then we'll go ahead and trim these little guys off. And I know you don't get to see because I got to not throw them all over the house. Ouch. Oh, and looks like I missed one. I'll just figure over that. Tap it down. There's another cut and another cut and another cut and another cut and bang on that some more. All right. <laughs> I don't like somebody. Um, that's the beautiful thing about breadboards. If they're a little off within reason, we're okay. Um, yes, I have burnt my fingertips enough not to be afraid of it anymore. Um, and like I said, those two silicon rings, normally I have them on this finger because I've found that this is where I usually burn myself. So that's that's the story there. I'll just kind of sweep some of that off the side. And yes, my beautiful pink dot so that I know where I'm at directly over the camera. Okay, so let's finish this up for today and get that button going. Okay, so the button, and the button is actually optional. You can work without it. Um, I like to, at least, if I'm going to build an experimental platform, I, I do want to at least have one input. So this is a 10K pull-up resistor, or this is a 10K resistor we're going to use as a pull-up. And then here's my fancy button. You can see it's got a little kind of weird square, square on there. That's because it will take... It takes a cap. Nifty. Okay, so we're going to need our 10K, our button, and we're going to use some orange wire because we haven't used orange wire yet. And so why not? Okay, so for starters, the button needs to be on four different, each leg of the button needs to be on its own interconnected row. So for example, F through J are all connected on the bottom and A through E are all connected on the bottom. So it's got to be there in between. And depending on how you do it, you can move it closer or farther. Um, I think on the original on the notes, I had it at like C19 for the lower left leg. So it was a little closer. We're going to do 22 just to confuse people because I can. So we're going to put our button down. And then the buttons are nice. Um, most of the time, their legs are preformed a little bit to make them a little bit easier to solder in place. And there's that. Um, moving that back over to the camera. It will fly in to zoom in.
And then we're just gonna tack down the four legs. There's one, maybe, or not. One, two. And the spin. And three and four. And there, I manually bent a resistor. Oops, there you go. Another screen, there we go. And there's our 10K. And we're gonna drop our 10K. Since we did our right leg on 24, we're going to drop our 10K onto 24 and bend back the legs. And cube zoom, why not? And we'll drop these in. Now on the original, I had dropped in a connector for to throw our two negative rails together on the outside. And looking at this board a little closer, I really didn't need to. So we are not gonna do that this time. Just make it a little neater. Now we'll flip it around, maybe, okay. And we'll go back out. Yes. All right. Yeah. Good tip, Meadow. If you don't have a 10K, anything above one will do the job. We're basically just trying not. It's basically a kind of a filter up. It's a pull up resistor. I'm tired, Ben, help me out. <laughs> All right, so let's, so we're gonna take this orange wire here Just like all the others. Snippy. Snippy. Twist. Twist. Off screen puddle of goo. And that's getting kind of icky, so let's do this. Tip icky. All right, there we go, better. All right. And a little solder, and a little wire, and a little more wire. And a bend. And another bend. And this is going to be way, way too long. So let's figure out how much wire we actually need here. And this time I am gonna grab a Sharpie and mark where about where I need the wire to end. So yeah, if you want to get nice and precise, use a Sharpie. 
So we'll cut this way down. Drop this here. Add a little goo from the off-screen goo puddle. And we'll tin it. There we go. And bend that down. And we're going to move this over too because not that fussy in a live demo. So there's our lower left leg going to power. And I'll get that under the that under the other camera here. And there's one leg. the other and you can kind of see here again let me make sure I get this in nicely in frame how this is kind of bridged with the leg for the button um, that's okay on this kind of board as you can see it's all copper down here and any solder we add is isn't gonna harm anything if we had a bridge going between two of these lines, that would be an entirely different story. That would be very, very bad. Okay, so we've got our button hooked up. Now we just have to let the Arduino read it. And because I have yet to use my favorite color on this board, and apparently not on the right, we're going to use a purple wire. Woohoo! And I'm just tired punching enough that if I have to, I will sing Skull Vikings to prove that purple is my favorite color and why. <laughs> All right, there's one side. And here's the other. And my most to self, if we go virtual, if we have to go virtual again next year, we're not gonna do all of the builds on the same day. By the last one, I'm pretty punchy. All right. Let's get this Some solder on here. And some solder on there. All right. All right, who wants to check the instructions to see if I originally had this on D9 or D10? <laughs> D10, all right, thank you, Beto. All right. All right, so we're going from, looks like about I-24 
two, J3. And we got a little bit of rat's nest going. And, and there we go. And we'll get that under the zoomed lens here. We'll do one side. And then the other. Oh my. Sorry. There it is. And there's one side. And the other. And yay. And so now I'm going to flip back over to the wide angle. And I'm just kind of letting the board hit the light at different angles. It makes it a little easier to see if I've accidentally bridged anything or anything that looks like it might need a little more solder or reflowed. So not great, not terrible, should be serviceable. So, okay, there's our project. And wow, I started late and I still have a couple minutes to spare. So yay. Um, so that's our project. <laughs> Um, we'll go ahead and we'll walk through programming it tomorrow. Um, if you want to try, try it tonight. Um, cause I know, I know there's a closing keynote and then a social hour. And, and then after that, that with most everybody being at home, it's not as long of a party or as much fun, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, do go ahead and try it. Um, if you look at the Arduino IDE, um, there's two sketches that'll let you test these things. And um, I'm just going to run through quick how to change them for these boards. Um, I'm not going to load them. Do we need to run the power? Oh, why, yes, John, we do need to run the power. So let's actually not look at the IDE. And actually, thank you very much, John, for reminding me because you're awesome. And I have been at this workbench way too long today. So we're going to need a red wire. And so we're going to take the red wire. And I'm going to zoom in here to show you where it goes. Okay, so if we look at the bottom right corner of the Arduino, we have these pins down here that are mysteriously marked 5V, RST, GND, and VIN. <laughs> um, the black wire joining both negative rails, we can actually leave, and as soon as I'm done connecting the power on the ground, I'll show you why. Okay, so back here. So what we need to do is we need to provide the LEDs with five volts. So we're going to use this 5V pin and hook that into the positive rail or the plus rail on, on there. Okay. 
So let's chain one end, give it a little bend, and I'm sorry I'm doing some of these things the way I would if I didn't have an audience. So in this one we're going to mark up again. Go away. All right. And oh, let's fade out a little bit. Here we go. And so we're back to cut. Okay. We're going to start at square one because I was on the wrong camera and I just messed up my wire. So we got our length of red wire. We're going to take one end, strip it, twist it. And tin it. And my puddle's almost dry. All right. And there we go there. And that's not quite perfect, so we'll just trim off a little bit. All right. And we're going to go back to the 5 volt. And there's that, and that, and that, and our friendly blue sharpie. Okay, let's not cut on the sharpie line again. Let's cut past the sharpie line and instead strip to the sharpie line. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. <sighs> smooch on there all right and so I've just made another little wire like all the others yay and we're gonna go positive to it looks like uh, row 12 column 12 however you want to look at it 12 C and positive rail And let's get that in focus. And let's see what haven't we used yet. There, reverse slide, why not? Okay. And we'll go positive rail first. And then up in here. All right. And we'll trim off the little tag. And we'll trim off the little tag. And the excess there. And that looks good. And then we're going to find some black wire. Ooh, black wire. And take that. And that. And twist. And then this one is. And wipe. And what we're really going to go here for the, the black wire is um, ground. 
and there's actually more than one ground um, on this board, but we're going to use this one. There's one on the other side, um, I think. And I think there's a third one, if I would remember where it is. I know there's at least three on an Arduino Uno. Um, that, that last pin next to ground is VIN, it's voltage in. So if you were going to say use double A batteries, four of them, to, to power this um, instead of say a little like lipstick charger or just leaving it plugged in on your desk, um, you would want to put there because that will take unregulated voltage, whereas the five volt pin is actually an out. Whereas the power coming in on the USB port is actually regulated. So one times. And so I'm not even anywhere. Okay. There we go. And you'd see it coming in. And let me pan back out or cut back out. There we go. And oh, 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 too long. Spin. There we go. Yeah, let's make sure that this fits before we tin it. So ground. And that could be a little shorter. So. Okay, should be good. So magical puddle off screen. And we did not get this through the magical puddle enough. Let's try that again. There we go, that's better. All right. So there we go. And we're just going to trim these down, pre trim these down a little bit. They're kind of long. And so this is going to go from ground GND into the negative rail and bend and bend and bend that way. There we go. Yeah, fly. All right. All right, and there's our last two connections for the evening. Coming right up. And then we'll explain why we don't need that black wire that we saw that you saw in the prototype. So there's that one end, and there's the other end. Oh good God. Oh there it is. And all right, so now the reason we don't need the black wire 
is that when I built the prototype, I did the black wire out of habit. I had I didn't really look at the board. I just I just out of habit connected the two negative rails. Um, afterwards, when I looked at it, I realized that the outside here, which is the negative rail on the one side, is actually all the way around and through on both sides. Um, it does look like we are going to need to do one little thing though. And that is where we are gonna need to bridge here. Is that we are gonna need to bridge, yeah, this one. Is that we are gonna need to bridge that one side, but that's going to be a little easier than having to add more wires. So we take this and you just put down a big glob of solder. And if you're lucky, you can get it to, oh well, sure, first time all day, I can get something to bridge that I wanted to bridge. All right, that makes my life awesome. You kind of put down a big glob of solder here. Fine, okay. So, and if it's not bridging, um, you can add a little piece of wire um, or actually even use like one of these. It's a leg from one of the LEDs. I probably have a little too much flux here to get it to bridge right. Yeah, it's not going to too much flux. So we'll bridge it up a little bit. Nope. Oh, fine. We'll show this on the other side where it's dry. You just kind of drag a little bit in between and it should connect. If it doesn't connect, you can actually cheat it by just grabbing the leftover bit from say a resistor or an LED. Like that.